Hey everyone, it's Simone Watson. Recently there was a video posted, I believe on June 8th, by a YouTube user who goes by Superwoman called, um, I believe it's called a geography lesson for racists or something. Um, I'll post it in the, I'll post the link in the description. And then there was a response posted by this guy, Steven Crowder, um, a rebuttal to Superwoman's video. And this you could say is a rebuttal to the rebuttal. So um, I'm just going to basically get into it. Um, Superwoman said some things. Um, she was saying things in a, in a snarky manner. Um, some of the specific you know, sentences she used or phrases she used, I don't exactly agree with, but I think she brought up a lot of um, really interesting points and um, actually really true points. She brought up a lot of true points in her video. Um, and one of the things that she talked about was racial profiling um, from a facetious standpoint that she said like um, for white people, not for white people, but for the, the particular racist that she was talking to she was like oh it must be tiring to be able to just walk right through airport security and then in steven crowder's video steven said um first off he said first of all i've never walked right through airport security um steven is a white man i don't know if yeah i probably should mention that he said that he's never walked right through airport security okay um that you know that in and of itself wouldn't be extremely concerning uh we know that people have things to do with security i mean you have to take your belt off or whatever so i'm guessing that maybe by that interpretation that's not walking right through um but then what disturbed me was what steven said next which was something to the effect of statistically terror attacks are um much more likely to be committed by people um you know practicing islam than by anyone else and therefore racial profiling is justified um and this is where to me his whole argument just like completely fell apart um for a few reasons okay first of all First of all, Superwoman mentioned that there are about 2 billion Muslim people in the world, okay? So, if you are looking at a list of terror attacks, if you're looking at a list of terror attacks and you're like, oh, um, something, you know, some high percentage of these were committed by, you know, people in radical Islam groups and, you know, therefore, okay, so, I'm sorry. Sure, if you go by your statistics, then you're like, oh, there, you know, there are more people practicing radical Islam committing terror attacks than there are people that don't practice, you know, than there are non-Muslims committing terror attacks. Um, but first of all, most Muslim people are not terrorists. I mean, this is just like, this is just like a statistical fact. Most Muslim people have never participated in a terror attack or you know and are not a part of radical extremist groups so that's point number one point number two islam is not the only religion that has extremist groups i mean in theory you could take i'm a christian okay i believe in jesus i believe that the bible is true and is right and is good but i also believe it is possible for someone to take something from the bible misinterpret it and use it as an excuse to do something evil such as kill someone. It's possible to do that, okay? So to make it seem like terrorism is an exclusively Muslim thing, like it's not, okay? It's really not. It's not exclusively Muslim. And like I said, most Muslims are not terrorists. Um, here's another point. Okay, another point is what do we consider terrorism? Based on this statistic, okay, that you've listed, terror attacks, quote unquote terror attacks, are mostly committed by Muslim people, right? But here's the thing. The term terrorism is in and of itself arguable because it speaks to the motive 
of a crime rather than the crime itself. If we were to say that every murder is in fact an act of terror, then those statistics would be very different. If we were to say that every murder that has been committed in, um, say, in the United States in the past hundred years, those statistics would be very different. So it is not, um, it's really, it's, it's really not fair to paint this one group as terrorists. Like in, in, in terror, when we define a terror attack, I guess what we mean is killing people to make a political statement, right? But there are lots of instances in which people kill other people to make a political statement and it doesn't get labeled terrorism, you know, by the media or by, you know, whoever it is that dreams up that label. There are many, many crimes that you could call terrorism, but that just don't get called it. For example, the Holocaust. Okay, so, and by the way, the Holocaust is not the only genocide that, I mean, there are plenty of other genocides that have taken place, but really, if you think about it, that's called killing people to further your own political agenda, which is terrorism. But, our problem, so our problem is not that Muslim people, our problem is not that Muslim people are somehow more likely to commit terror acts than non-Muslim people. Our problem is that we only label it a terror act when it's committed by someone Muslim. So there we go. And then you go into how um, basically that is an excuse for racial profiling. It's not an excuse for racial profiling. Um, I would argue that there's no excuse for racial profiling. Um, here's the thing. If you think that it's somehow easy for people to, you know, if you think it's somehow easy for people to try and commit some kind of terror act on an airplane, that's why you have, that's why you make the security more stringent. But if it's going to be stringent, it should be stringent for everyone. Because as we've earlier, as we've covered earlier, being Muslim or non-Muslim has very little effect on whether you're going to decide to do an act of terror. Um, but anyway, yeah. So if it's going to be stringent, it should be stringent for everyone. And um, honestly, for a person like Steven Crowder, who is white and male, um, to say that racial profiling is good or justified, um, it really it really reeks of something that is often called white privilege. And I know some people don't like the term white privilege, but just hear me out for a second. White privilege. If you have white privilege, you may not know you have it because it seems normal to you, right? It's normal to you to wake up in the morning and not be like constantly reminded of what race you are in a negative way. This is essentially white privilege, okay? It's the privilege of you being able to say some stuff and a person of color can say the same stuff, but you are like more respected for it than the person of color. It's the privilege of being able to say things in an aggressive tone and a person of color could say things in just the exact same tone, but people perceive you as being somehow less malevolent than that person of color. That's white privilege. And if you've grown up with it, if you've lived with it your whole life, it doesn't seem like privilege to you. It probably just seems like normalcy. It probably just seems like how life is. But if you try, if you try to like actually think about it from someone else's angle, you might actually realize that it's messed up. I mean, I hate to like call out names here, but you know, this guy, Corey Lewandowski, who is also white and male, so he has white privilege and male privilege, he says and does things in ways that are so abrasive to other people. If you picture someone who is, for example, me, okay, who is, for example, a black woman, saying the same things Corey Lewandowski says in the same way that he says them, doing the same things that he does, society would perceive it completely differently. That's what white privilege is.
So because you have white privilege, if you're saying that racial profiling is good, I can only assume that it wouldn't be good to you if you had been on the receiving end of it. And so I would encourage you to actually like learn more about the topic from people that have been through racial profiling and that maybe have a little bit of a deeper understanding of the harm that it causes. However, even if you don't read things by people talking about racial profiling from the standpoint of those who have experienced it, it's pretty plain to see that racial profiling is harmful. I mean, one of the most obvious examples is, you know, the repeated shooting of unarmed black men by police officers. Why? Because there is this overall idea that black men are somehow criminals. This idea has been around for a very long time. You know, it's not new. It's been around since probably like, yeah, it's been around since the time of slavery and it's a harmful concept. And if we just keep accepting things like that, another, another, perhaps more relevant to your example, um, concept is the concept that Muslim people are terrorists or particularly, you know, people, you know, Desi people or people from the Middle East are terrorists. Um, this is extremely harmful. It's extremely harmful to the people that are going to get mistreated because of other people's internalized prejudices and because of the system's internalized prejudice, which is often known as racism. So to advocate for racial profiling is essentially to promote racism. Okay, so I was thinking about addressing other points in that video, but I think I'm just gonna stop there. Um, yeah, I mean, that was just the main thing that I felt the need to say. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.